Welcome back to episode five of the Atlanta cast or just Atlanta cast. Today we're talking about the fifth episode of Atlanta. This one's called uh, No One Beats the Beebs. And uh, before we get started, just like to remind everybody once again that we have uh, Patreon and would greatly recommend uh, that any of you guys check that out if you're looking to support the show. We got three tiers. First tier will get you a shout out at the end of each episode from us. Second tier will get you access to episodes two weeks earlier than they go up on YouTube. And the third tier will get you access to bonus episodes that are not available to anybody else. So go check that out. We just did one on This Is America. Um which was the longest episode we've done yet. Even though it was a short <laughs> but, uh, video. <laughs> <laughs> lots to talk about. Lots there to was talk a about. lot there. That was good. But uh, yeah, so today we're talking about season one, episode five of Atlanta, regular old show. This one is called No One Beats the Beebs. Dad, do you want to? Yeah, so this is in the, the title is in reference to Justin Bieber. And for those who maybe are too young to remember uh he was a teen idol uh i this is actually uh not that long ago so i'm I'm sure he's still in the consciousness of most people but i was gonna say i don't think anybody's too young to know who justin bieber is well the uh some of the some of the comedy that's in in this episode pokes fun at some of his sort of teenage exploits yeah, and I don't know how that's familiar true. that is with people, but but yeah, that no one beats the beebs. It, it's uh, again uh, on this topic of of fame and popularity, and uh, particularly as it re- as it uh, affects um, Alf Alfred or post uh, Paperboy, <clears throat> uh, the 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 celebrity in in this case is. Justin Bieber or a, an actor uh, posing as Justin Bieber, so that we can we're going to end up talking about what the creators intended to do by uh, grafting uh, Justin Bieber's name on this young black actor. Um, uh, but uh, before we get to that, we'll we'll just set it up. Um, the opening scene <clears throat> is. Um, Paperboy posing for cameras. There's the paparazzi is at some sort of event. We we come to understand it's a celebrity basketball game, and Paperboy is trying to draw the attention of a TV journalist. I think her name is Val Val Joiner, or it, that doesn't really matter. But he's Paperboy's hoping to give an interview, um, and the journalist recognizes him and. She's like, oh, you're this guy, the guy who shot someone, um, which, you know, sort of troubles Paperboy. You can see the look on his face is like, oh, crap, you know. But the journalist kind of brushes him off, stating that her audience isn't into the whole gangster thing. So you can see that Al feels mischaracterized or misidentified. And uh, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't get the interview with this woman. And then, <clears throat> then we see the camera pans over, and we see uh, this young, like I said, a young young black celebrity entering with an entourage of people, whom Earn uh, uh, immediately recognizes as Justin Bieber, <clears throat> and uh, and Justin Justin comes through. You know, he's sort of clowning for the camera, and and he like knocks over a bunch of stuff on the. Off, off of a table on purpose, I guess thinking that's funny for some reason. Um, Justin recognizes Al as, quote, the N-word who blew that other N-word's brains out. Cool. So, <laughs> like, so uh, again, here, here we, we see Paperboy's sort of looking like, why are people associating with this event that didn't really happen? Um, but Ern, Ern is uh, impressed. You know, he, he knows who this person is. He knows he's a big celebrity, and the fact that he recognizes Paperboy <clears throat> is probably a good thing. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there, and, and we can take comments, because my, the first thing I wanted to ask you uh, is, what do you think about the use mm-hmm. of, of Justin Bieber in this way? I, I, I kind of immediately thought about the theater production of Hamilton where they, you know, they, they, they put the, 
you know, a black actor in place of a historically white character. I don't know if that has anything at all to do with this, but it seemed like a, maybe it was like a little shout out to I, Hamilton. Or... I did not think about that. Um, yeah, I don't know enough about the... I mean, I know that's a... I mean, I know about that uh, Hamilton like ex- or exercise where they like took a uh, predominantly white cast and made it all black, but I don't know too much about why that was done or if there was any particular reason um but i think with uh i think that with this episode of atlanta i think what they were going for is sort of a uh culture criticism because in real life uh justin bieber uh during that i want to say like early to mid 2010s uh sort of span was uh was cast into the limelight at a very young age and it clearly had an effect on his development and um and a lot of people accused him and criticized him of being arrogant and uh and just like very full of himself uh, i i think i i don't know too much about uh justin bieber i didn't follow him at this time but like i heard that um he would like spit on he at one point like spit on fans and like and like would uh would like he like threw something at a fan i, I don't remember yeah, but he, like he, he had overall some bad uh, behavior yeah but teenager. like the main yeah and like the main but the main criticism was just that he like carried himself and talked about himself in a way that was very like arrogant and people didn't like that um which you know fair well <laughs> um, the teenage girls didn't care and i think well we're gonna come back to that well i mean the, that's the same uh well that's the same case in in this episode yeah. you know there's that one point a girl who just says like i love you and and bieber's like i know bitch yeah yeah <laughs> and uh and um so obviously they're you know i i obviously this character is being drawn to be to like effectively what they're i think what they're trying to say is that this justin bieber is exactly the same as the real life justin bieber only this one is black like that's the only change they yeah made. it's and, probably um, like uh, it's not not an accurate uh um analogy to hamilton because it, i think in this case they're they're really taking a shot at justin bieber i mean i don't i wonder if well absolutely i wonder if I the think... creators like cleared this with justin bieber because this, it's possible. This is well, the little, thing is, a little. The degrading. thing is that, uh, I mean, I guess I, I guess I can get into it later. But I think that the main idea is that they are trying to portray Justin and possibly exaggerate. Um, well, they're they're trying to portray, portray the just like the actions that you know the real Justin Bieber took that a lot of people criticized him for. Except now they're uh, they're like putting a black face over those actions and. You know, and we're in obviously, you know, as the audience, you find this, you know, Justin Bieber, like pretty annoying, especially because we're mostly seeing him through the eyes of our protagonists, uh, mainly Al, who hates him. He hates this Justin Bieber. And he, and uh, and it, it's it's pretty easy to agree with those criticisms of him being full of himself and and kind of you know, pretentious and just kind of like an asshole. So why didn't uh, the creators and, uh, use a, a, a real uh, black uh entertainer like maybe i think chris brown i think the reason why is because um in real life uh justin bieber recovered from that mostly like recovered from that uh image like he he dropped a he dropped the album purpose which was sort of a uh christian awakening for him where he um he called it like his apology tour that album and um and on it is uh, is featured the song "Sorry," which um, which Al actually quotes. He says, "Is it too late to say so- to say I'm sorry?" Mm-hmm. Um, in this episode, which I think is is another uh, instance of the of like connecting this Justin Bieber to the real one, and um, and insinuating that uh, that this Justin Bieber, at least in the eyes of I, the reason I said it was a criticism of the culture, is I think it's a criticism of like audience culture Mm -hmm. specifically uh the people who uh saw justin bieber um take all these kind of like deplorable actions in his like late teens and then when and then he when he released his album purpose 
um, and just kind of said, hey, I'm sorry. Uh, everybody kind of immediately forgave him mm -hmm. and started seeing him in a, in a new light. And I think the idea here is that it's taking a it's taking that character and saying, like, how would uh, people have reacted differently if he was black? I think that uh, the show is implying that, you know, as, like as an audience, you know, we see this Justin Bieber and uh, and, you know, we hate him. <laughs> I think that's like I think most people are going to very much dislike this fictional Justin Bieber in the show. And we're going to and we would want to see him, you know, I guess, uh, uh, repent for his actions. But I mean, and, the, um, the story ends the same, though, despite the fact that he's a black actor. Yeah, exactly. And that's, like, so I think, that, I think, so ultimately, you're saying the criticism is on the on the audience, the people who who just I think, overlook his boorish behavior and just see I the think, entertainment. Yeah, I think that the I think the criticism is like we're meant to we're meant to feel like what's happening in the show is wrong or just like very weird. We're meant to feel like this is. This is bizarre. This just like Justin Bieber, he should like in the show, he should have uh, you know, been punished or something or lost some some of his uh of his reputation over this or something. And then and then that doesn't happen. People immediately forgive him when he says like, "Listen, I'm uh that that wasn't who I am." Uh and to to prove it, I'm going to sing this song called uh or he didn't say what it was called, but he was like, "I'm just going to sing this song and it's like and it goes like, you know, whatever I did doesn't matter." Yeah, yeah. Uh or whatever and uh he says like you know i'll always be there uh whatever i did doesn't matter that's how i show you i care or something like that like you know vapid lyrics that are obviously uh meant to be interpreted as a, as, as a shallow and uh, an insincere apology and yet the public eats it all up and i think that um you know through the lens of this show that's really obvious and we the audience are meant to be upset by that but I think then we're also supposed to, and I mean, again, I wasn't really like, uh, I wasn't really like paying attention to Justin Bieber when, during his rise and fall, and then I guess kind of redemption arc. But um, but uh, I think the audience is supposed to like look at themselves and like and and kind of question why why might we have a different reaction to this Justin Bieber versus the one we saw in real life? Yeah, that's because a large majority of people in real life you know they didn't like justin bieber and then uh and then he kind of was able to redeem himself like relatively people people nowadays don't seem to like care too much about his past even though um as i'll get into later like there he has done some really really fuck shit yeah yeah i mean it this is this plays itself out over and over i, I was actually i mentioned chris brown you know that name he, uh yeah he was he's another one of these the super talented pop singer dancer who punched out his girlfriend and mm -hmm. he uh, had a couple episodes of violence like that and, and and yet you know people still go and watch this guy perform despite the terrible behavior anyway there's another level oh, is is he white no he's black that's oh, why okay, i was really. like well what if they had introduced this g character as chris brown an actual black person, but I, I think I think you're right. I think your analysis is correct. It's it's more of a criticism of of uh, our fascination with these um, these celebrities, and despite whatever terrible behavior they display, you know, we're willing to overlook it. But there's another there's another uh, level to this, which is um, Paperboy or Al. Um, he he doesn't get the same treatment, he, and I think I think maybe what the creators were going for more than just uh, uh, taking a sh taking shots at Justin Bieber or that persona is, is the sort of um, the stereotype of the pop star versus the rap artist. So um, uh, Paperboy is, is getting um, popularity because he has this, per this persona of being a thug or, you know, a gangster and, uh, but you know that that the same forgiveness ultimately doesn't go to to uh, Al. I mean, because it was really Al Al's behavior that really triggered like like the fight and that, that precipitates him during the basketball game. But we'll we'll get to that at the end. So so let's switch now to um, uh, well, okay. Just before before we leave 
Paperboy with the journalist, um, he Justin does sit briefly with with this Val Joiner journalist um, who seems very interested in in Justin and he's but he's not really giving an interview. He's just clowning for the camera and he's 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 you know bragging about how he's going to play this basketball game. So now we switch to Earn's story. Earn is there with Paperboy, uh, but they separate when it comes time for Paperboy to go get ready for the basketball game. Earn um, uh, bumps into somebody, a woman named Janice, who mistakes Earn for somebody named Alonzo. She's like, Alonzo? And, and Earn just looks confused. She apparently thinks he's an agent who she used to work with. Earn earned uh does not uh reveal his true identity he just quietly takes advantage of the fact that janice is able to escort him into this party where there's other agents socializing um and so he he's gets a chance to like rub elbows with some other agents um we go we cut back to the uh, preliminary sequence before the basketball game and Justin is in the hallway he apparently is urinating in the hallway for no 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 good reason uh, but other than being a clown Al Al is lined up with the opposing team he's he's criticizing uh, Justin with a, a, a teammate who we don't know who this person is but the teammate is just smiling like aha look at this silly guy uh, so no one else seems to acknowledge, other, other than Paperboy, nobody else seems to be acknowledge, acknowledging that Justin is being a, a clown. Al seems jealous of Justin, and he's, he's, he says he's, you know, he's going to put him in his place. He, and uh, mm-hmm. so the game starts. Is it, there, uh, the, immediately we see uh, Justin with the basketball. He scores. He showboats to the crowd. Al tells his teammates that he's he wants to guard Justin. Like whoever was guarding him, apparently was not, you know, you know, guarding him well enough. So Al wants to score, or Al wants to guard him. Al actually gets the ball and scores at one point. And then on the next sequence, on the as they go to the other end of the court, Al actually blocks Justin's shot and starts taunting him. Justin and Al start trash talking to each other, uh, and uh, and then. Then we see Justin with the ball again, and this time, then he, this time he fakes out Al, and Al like falls down as Justin goes to the basket and scores. Um, I have I have to insert a criticism here as uh, as yeah. as someone uh, who played competitive sports myself. Th- these guys are not basketball players. Unfortunately, they're they're good yeah. actors, but anybody who anybody who has actually played basketball or any sports really would recognize that these two the two primary actors don't really have a lot of skills. So it looks, it looks pretty fake to me. Um, like the fact that he just fell down, like he really did. He wasn't even dribbling the basketball. He somehow, he somehow makes Al just fall to the ground and uh, he goes to the basket and scores. So that's just a pet peeve of mine because I, I, you see this in a lot of other movies too. I mean, I could, I could name a handful of, of baseball movies uh, that were, it's just his moxie or the actor the actor just you can tell they were not really an athlete they cast they cast them for their acting abilities but not uh, not their ability to play the actual sport that they're they're acting in yeah okay there's a third storyline here um, that involves Darius so we leave the basketball court scene or what what's about to hap- start in the uh, in the basketball game and we we see we see Darius Darius gets out of bed he rolls up some sort of poster uh, in, in a tube and he goes off to a gun range uh, and he, he we, we can see that he's gonna he's gonna take uh, target practice in this gun range he, he rents a gun and some bullets and, he, and when he goes to the the um, alley or whatever they call it a little area that the individual has to hang their target he he pulls out a, a, a silhouette picture of a dog for his target practice and uh the camera sort of pauses on 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 uh his target hanging next to 
one of a silhouette of a man holding a woman, like with his another silhouette figure of a man holding mm-hmm. a woman at gunpoint. Like whoever's in the next uh, alley is shooting at this one target. But Darius puts it to put this uh, picture of a dog up and. And he's shooting at it. He fires several rounds at the target. And, and this draws the attention of, of, of another patron who, who's next to him, uh, who this sort of burly looking white guy uh, who objects to the idea of him shooting at dogs. And uh, he's, he just says, you can't shoot dogs. What are you, a psycho? <laughs> which, yeah. which precipitates this kind of funny exchange with, mm-hmm. where, where Darius's comeback is like, um, well, Darius actually tries to explain that in his neighborhood, dogs are a menace and that there's, you know, a good reason why he might want to shoot a dog. And, and then he points out at a, a, a third target at who I don't know whose target this was, but it's actually a picture of a, a father figure with a smiling face. And Darius is like, why would I sh- want to shoot at a human target? And um and then you can tell the guy is still a, the the big burly white guy is still annoyed. He's like, I'm not mm-hmm. gonna let you shoot a dog, but you know my kids might be here yeah. or something. And then there's this other guy, which like, why would you let your? Why would that matter that his kids were there? <laughs> well, I I don't think his kids. Well, actually, maybe there was a kid. Maybe that was his son. There was a third person in the background who maybe who, I don't know. Wasn't I thought a kid. he said? It I thought he a, said like my kids could be. Yeah, here. I think as that's if, what like, he implied. I just thought it like as if like children seeing a guy shoot a poster of like a silhouette of a dog would be traumatizing. Right, right. In like a gun range. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because, like, that like I actually. I actually uh, explained this scene to uh, my wife <laughs> and she, her immediate re- reaction was the same thing as this burly white guy. She was like appalled at the idea that somebody would shoot at a huh. dog poster. So, so there is kind of a, there is, they, they purposely like they did this to like her. Perp- I mean, I could, I can see why you'd like, I can see why you'd be like, I don't know, maybe not appalled, but like you wouldn't like the idea of somebody shooting at a at a dog poster. But like, I mean, as Darius points out, like people shoot it, like just like shooting at uh, any random poster doesn't mean that that's what you want to shoot in real life. Right. Well, yeah, and Hopefully. that's exactly that. When I <laughs> if that if that dad poster is anything <laughs> to go off of. Yeah, the, the dad poster was purposely put in there to confuse you too, but. Because when I re- watched this the second time, I paused it and I was like, okay, first of all, I could understand, like, if you're a pet owner, that this would be, you know, a, like, like. Yeah, but bot- like, you're not going to go up to, you're but, not going to, like, walk up to the person next to you and be like, don't yeah, do that. Yeah, you, you don't approach somebody <laughs> at a gun range hardly at all. Like, he's anyway. obviously being unreasonable. Yeah, and, and, and that's, and, and my second thought was, okay, I've handled guns before and i've actually been to gun ranges before and mm-hmm. and yeah I, I don't care what the other guy shoot what target he's shooting at and you know i would certainly never like approach the guy like that but <laughs> yeah. but like when they did have the exchange then and the fact that darius is actually explaining that yeah he is going to be shooting dogs <laughs> then then it kind of flips, like, the, as a viewer, you're like, well, oh, wait a minute. self-defense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, like, now we're, like, we're forced yeah. into this, like, uh, um, situation of, like, 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 trying to decide whether this is, this is uh, appropriate or acceptable. I guess, I guess it is. I mean. I feel that there is absolutely no justification for saying it's not. <laughs> really? Not only in is reality, Darius not in reality, not only think, is yeah, okay not only is Darius shoot not shooting dog. an, not only is Darius not shooting an actual dog. It's a poster, like it could be anything. <laughs> uh, but also, if he is, you know, practicing to actually shoot real dogs, which he his justification, he was doing. yeah, which his justification is the dogs in my neighborhood are crazy, and you know what? Some dogs are dangerous, yes. and. It's re- like you don't want to just run it. Like dogs can run faster than human. <laughs> I would actually take his. Some side dogs too. have rabies. I, I think I would actually take his side with given 
the explanation, the implication being that you're doing it in self-defense or something. Or uh, to- it's not an implication. It's he explicitly said. Well, I guess it's an implication by the by the phrase "the dogs in my neighborhood are crazy." Yeah. But I feel like that leaves extremely little to to well uh, interpretation. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, think about it. In reality, is do you want citizens out there? Sh- even if it is a, a, a you know a, a mean dog, I don't I don't know if you <laughs> if you want that policy to be an actual thing. I mean, I like I said, I well, I mean, isn't it policy that like if if uh, if you believe your life, if you truly believe your life is in immediate danger, then you're justified in enacting self defense or something. So. Like that's that's applied to, I, well, I that's applied to. Um, I, I guess related to this show, I just know that there was a uh, there was like one shooting at like a gas station where uh, where a guy, uh, a, a white man, shot a black man, and uh, and his justification was that it was like in self defense, and he. I think he got off either like a uh, lighter than he would have otherwise or may have gotten off on all charges um, because, you know, like, like like they decided like, yeah, you know, if you if like I, the, the black man didn't I don't think he had any weapons or anything, but he like was walking towards him or something. And uh, and the and the argument was that like the white the white guy thought that like he was going to pull a knife on him or something. Oh, yeah. There's always, and, uh, like there's always debatable scenarios yeah that come up in yeah debate court. debate on like whether like, or not he was justified in in believing that his life was in danger or if he even did and stuff and uh and this gets and, yeah, i mean I, i'm of the opinion that guns right i mean yeah this is in the news right now obviously that because there's been shootings and that it's about you know people i i actually do generally speaking come down on the the side of people you know having the right to own guns to defend themselves but you know there, there's a slippery slope there that that you know you don't want people just pulling guns out shooting dogs or uh you know just just saying oh i thought i felt well, i feel again like and i'm gonna pull this. i would agree like dogs in general like no you don't want people just pulling out weapons and shooting dogs but like in the same vein and what i would feel is the more important like thing to be having the conversation about is that you don't want people pulling out guns and shooting other people. Yeah. Right. Well, so, what about the uh, silhouette, the first silhouette of the, <laughs> the, the, uh, the man, or uh, obviously it was meant to be a man holding a woman hostage. hostage. Yeah. Would you shoot that person? I mean, if you feel that, if you feel that either your or the woman's life is in sincere danger, then I would say, yeah, you're, you're justified in, in enacting self-defense or, you know, you're, defense for another person. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the law and I, is and, in that situation, to be honest. Yeah. I don't know what the law is. I'm just kind of talking about like how I would more feel morally, about like, like, yeah. would I think less of that person, you know, no, I agree. Um, I would, and agree. I would generally come down on the side of like, no. And so, you know, I would say that, I guess the difference is that that person's poster was like was like a picture of like an explicitly life or death sit or presumably like life or death situation whereas like Darius's picture was just a dog <laughs> like it wasn't necessarily a dog that looked like it was coming to like attack him but uh, like I doubt, like I don't know I I I doubt that <laughs> like I I bet he was just like in the store looking for uh, posters of shit to shoot and he couldn't and he was like, OK, well, if he found a dog that looked like it was charging at him, he would have picked that one. But like, I don't know, gun shops probably don't get that specific with the, you know what, the types of target practice here. posters. They, 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 missed, they missed a good comic relief scene that the, the, when they flashed to the poster of the father figure with a pipe. It's 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 comical. Just the picture itself. Yeah. Like, why would somebody be shooting it? What looks like an amiable father figure with a pipe. yeah exactly they Why should would have you had not they should have more mad at that <laughs> well yeah that's what I'm saying what the creator should have done is they should have had like an angry looking like woman or or stepchild or something <laughs> shooting at that father figure <laughs> that would have that would have been just strictly comedy obviously but but yeah so so actually so we didn't mention like there is like a, a um, a racial thing that emerges. I think the well, re- the real thing that that comes out of this yeah, scene I, is the the third party. That there's a um, a Middle Eastern. I think I'm right in saying this is a Middle Eastern guy who 
who intervenes when Darius and this white guy, this burly white guy, are having a back and forth about whether or not it's appropriate to sh- target practice mm-hmm. or you know, shooting at a dog target. This <laughs> this sort of um, uh, angry uh, Middle Eastern guy uh, butts into the conversation and, and sort of argues on Darius's behalf, like he should be able to do whatever he wants. And then he then he accuses the what the white guy of shooting at a me- like he saw him shooting at a Mexican target somehow I guess mm-hmm. we d- we didn't the viewer didn't see this but I guess <laughs> Middle Eastern guy must have seen this yeah but the white guy doesn't refute it so I feel like it's fair to yeah. consider that but then he makes like some anti-American comments like like he's he's he wants to inspire some sort of like wars of their revolution <laughs> for reasons that like. Even Darius is like, wait a minute. You can see like the confusion he says, on he Darius. He says like face. a revolution. He says like a revolution will spark from within. Blood will spill. And Darius is like, I didn't say all that. <laughs> yeah. So and like, I'll say okay, okay. For this, this is a this is an oddly handled scene. It is yeah. because I I actually think okay, I I think that the the intent of this scene is communicated very clearly. Um, although there are like a few. I don't know, contingencies, which is, first of all, that, um, you know, the guy is shooting um, the the white guy who goes over to sort of to talk to Darius about his about his poster. Um, he is initially, you know, facing his own poster and shooting and he has his headphones on and there are barriers between all of the uh, all of the booths, I guess, um, for shooting targets. And you can, we see the moment that they like realize that Darius is like shooting a dog poster and they're looking at the poster, you know, they don't see him. And then they decide to go over to talk to him about this. Like they haven't, they don't know that he's black at this Ah, point. Like they weren't, they, they weren't facing him when he walked past behind them and they couldn't see him shooting because there was a barrier between them and him. All they saw was the poster. So in that sense, you would kind of get the implication that, uh, I I feel like this. The guy was I feel like this lover. might have. I feel like well yeah yeah but I so I, but given how the rest of the scene kind of plays out, I feel like this may have just been an oversight. I feel like they might have just uh forgotten about how shooting, uh, works. Uh, oh, you mean you think you think the white guy was meant to be overtly racist? maybe well well i don't know about like overtly anything i think that a lot of this show is about implying that there that yeah. uh, like there is racism uh in a lot of like social interactions even if it's not overt you know even if it's not you know white people calling black people the n-word um it's just in how they're treated and i think that that's supported in uh like as this scene plays out as you know the confrontation gets a little more heated um the uh manager uh, comes over and tells Darius with a with a gun pointed at Darius and says, "Hey, you got to get out of here! I told you, don't start no shit." Yeah. And Darius is like, "Whoa, whoa, okay, okay." I think that and guy he, was, Darius is that guy was meant to be the overt racist, not yeah, yeah. Not the, the, uh, and and I think that what's important here is that we didn't see that guy tell Darius like like he says, "I told you the rules. You got to get out of yeah, here. I'm not going to let that. you start any shit." We didn't see that guy telling Darius the rules and I think that's intentional in a similar way to why we didn't see uh the specifics of the shooting in episode one we cut to an above head shot and just heard like a shot go off I think that uh I think that that ambiguity over what exactly happened leading up to the events we're concerned with is intentional because it kind of like uh because you know in real life we can't go back in time and like revisit and mull over the exact words and the tone that was used in conversations to you know establish sort of agreed upon uh like dynamics between people um we can only go off of what we remember and you know people's memories are inherently fallible and people always have two different sides of the story and i think that this kind of ambiguity ambiguity is uh is meant to call attention or make the viewer think about whose side of the story is more correct you know is this guy like did this guy say you know when he was talking to Darius and telling him the rules did he say hey if there is any sort of confrontation between you and another like person I'm going to walk you out of the store with a gun pointed at you you know and force you to leave or was it that he just gave him you know I guess the normal rule like he didn't really say anything he was just like you know don't 
don't uh don't instigate any violence or whatever and then he sees like any kind of confrontation between Darius and this other guy going on and he immediately jumps to the conclusion that oh the black guy is being aggressive and yeah, I need to get I him out of here that, like, that was what was the creators were going for is Darius was really well, I he think, was really not yeah. doing anything wrong other than yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think that but that he, is he was, I think that is this he was like the collateral damage it was really mm -hmm. the middle eastern guy that should have been escorted out of there right oh yeah probably he's the but one that I started mean, the argument i will say that i think that that is the the truth of the situation that played out as we saw it but i think that the fact that we technically like, like even though that is extremely apparent to us the audience and to you know presumably darius himself there we technically can't prove it you know <laughs> and i think like and i think that that's what the I think that that's like another thing that the show's kind of wanting us to think about that like you know in a lot of and I think that um what it's trying to say is that uh, a lot of African American people or I guess you know people of minority um, in America will kind of experience these social situations where they feel like they're being unfairly treated and there's a lot of reason to suspect that it's race related but you technically can't prove it yeah. and that kind of a lot that kind of like makes it a lot harder to to uh change these situations from happening um, i mean it is and with the it is also like i i'm sure the creators did this on purpose it's like what well if this guy was racist apparently he was just racist towards black guys because why didn't he why didn't he like see the middle eastern guy as like oh you know in the same yeah that was another thing that i was going to say about this scene being kind of weirdly put together because I think that the I think that the Middle Eastern guy was he's I think he's obviously intentionally there to confuse like be a stereotype. Well, I th I think that he I think that he's there to I think highlight that Darius is not like the extreme that these people seem to think that he is by contrasting him against this stereotype that people will immediately recognize which and and I think that given the type of show this is and given the type of people that we know the creators are, you know, obviously I do not think that that's what they think that all Middle Eastern people are like. But I think I think this was like used as a narrative shorthand to and I should say communicate it's, it's something not... about Darius more more so. I don't know if that, you know, I, I feel like maybe there was a better way to go about doing that. And it's another like thing that where yeah. I'm thinking like that the fact that i you know the, as with almost every major conflict in this show like i'm very inclined to believe that this is race related um and so it would it seems weird that this whole conflict would be instigated in a situation where these guys definitely could not tell that darius was black before seeing him in person uh, which was after they decided to walk up and confront him about his dog poster um and also that they would include this you know obvious uh like over the top stereotype caricature of Middle Eastern people, as a lot of Americans, yeah. a, a lot of paranoid Americans are. Um, well, I think that. So I think that I, I'll, I'll just yeah. say that um, this is what I really like about this show in general is like the ambiguity. Like, there's so many shows on on TV, Netflix, wherever, whatever streaming services that are just so cookie cutter and so easy to predict, and you see the trope, you know, emerge. The characters are just, you know, obvious. Like you, you can almost predict what the next scene is going to be like. But, but I, I really like what they do, like by purposely like confusing scenario, the situations. Like, yeah, this. don't get me wrong. I think that this, like, I, I, I wouldn't say that I'd rather have this, like, have the characters be able to tell that Darius was black beforehand, or, or have this, uh, you know or have this stereotype of Middle Eastern uh, guys like not be in the show, because I think that, um, you know, the, the problem that there is to take with that kind of thing would be that like, uh, you know, it's, it's perpetuating harmful stereotypes. But I think that, uh, that anybody watching this show is going to be very aware of the fact that that's not the intent of the show, um, given the types of subject matters that it concerns itself with. And just given the, rest of the context of the show and and i think that i think that that like provides a really interesting like lens to view the show through and it like makes it feel yeah not like a lot of other shows which is something that i just kind of inherently value and i like the i like the fact that like as a viewer and i've watched i watched that scene twice and i still i'm not sure if the creators did it on purpose to 
or if, if like what you're saying is maybe they maybe they were really maybe you know they should have put a little shot of the white guy glancing over at Darius as he walked by to his his you know boot. yeah like that's what I mean is that I feel like I'm not what sure the info- it could it could go it could yeah be like way. I feel like the the takeaway that we can very clearly glean from this scene seems to be in conflict with these little moments that uh, would kind of go against it, but that ultimately don't change like the, the, the theme or the, I guess the lesson or the idea that this theme wants us or that this uh, scene wants us to think about, um, which kind of like makes me think that maybe it was a mistake or an oversight, but then also it's like, this kind of just seems like an Atlanta thing to do. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there, there's, there I mean, this is the are... same episode where we have a real life Justin Bieber, but he's also black, <laughs> yeah. you know, Yeah, I mean, the... which actually reminds me, um, we I, I, I uh, mentioned this on the bonus episode, but I said I was going to mention it in uh, one of the uh, regular episodes is that uh, this is something they do a lot is have like real life characters on the show. Um, and one example of that was the Migos, like the three, uh, oh, yeah. the three like drug dealers. And, uh, and I was embarrassed that I <laughs> did not realize that those were real, uh, artists, real rappers, uh, who were just playing themselves in the show. So, yeah, I think you did uh, and I, it might be too late. People might've already, <laughs> people might've already called me out, uh, in the comments <laughs> of that video, but just letting you know, this is before that video has, has been, uh, published to YouTube. So. I am aware. <laughs> okay, so meanwhile, back at the social gathering where Ern is networking with other other uh, agents, he's again approached by this woman, Janice, and Ern just continues to play along with her, allowing her to think that he's this Alonzo person. But now she... Yeah, and I'll say this, is, this episode is also, I think, the first... Uh, I think it's the first instance of what seems to be um, a white person mistaking. I don't know why it always happens to earn, but on multiple occasions, white people will mistake earn for Somebody like else. they'll they they seemingly can't tell all all black people. Oh apart. yeah, that's that's kind of a this happens too. That I yeah, th- this happens multiple times throughout the series in like in like a way that seems. I mean, I guess we don't know what Alonzo looks like. For all we know, he looks just like Earn. But uh, but yeah, multiple points like <laughs> what seems like should be just the easiest distinction to tell between people. People just like cannot tell that Ern <laughs> is not some other black person. That's a very um, long standing trope or, or, you know, they all look alike kind of thing that that goes back decades. Like, I, you, yeah, you don't remember. But I, I, I remember people like making jokes about that. Even black comedians yeah. making jokes about how. We all yeah. look alike to white people, but in this in this uh, scene, then uh, this woman actually starts to get kind of hostile towards her or who she thinks is Alonzo. She accuses him of some mm-hmm. sort of disloyalty to her. Apparently, this Alonzo person must have spoken badly about her, or maybe he took some of her clients or something. It's not, that was what I got the impression not, of was that he took some of her yeah, clients. Not yeah, entirely clear. But then she she calls him like a she calls him a, a f- cocksucker, and and uh, yeah. so he's like, "Holy crap! Like, what did what did I do?" And she also she also says, "I mean, she didn't use racial sort. Of, well, actually, she did. She called him. She, she used the word sharecropper or something. She made reference to. Uh, I don't know what sh- that word means. Well, that that's a historical reference to like uh, somebody who, uh, not specifically a slave, but somebody who worked." on the land for something like a surf yeah yeah kind of like a surf she says wipe that sharecropper smile off your face um so so that's very derogatory but anyway then but then like before they part ways she actually kisses him on the lips and then but then threatens that threatens him like i'm gonna take everything back from you yeah this was the funniest moment in the show up to up to this point for me is she just like she just like kisses him and he's just like he grabs her arm and she and he's like i'm not alonzo and she just goes i'm gonna make sure you die homeless she she doesn't believe him (laughs) and then she just walks off and we never see her again yeah yeah i actually i don't know really what the creators were going for with this character um other than Maybe maybe it was just meant to like point out something about the industry 
and you know working in you know as an agent that earn is is face yeah i'll be honest i don't see this as like i mean i mean like i mean i guess uh i guess spoilers but we never see this woman again yeah. um i think uh i think maybe this is kind of like a culmination of like things we want to get done in earn's arc like a we want to uh, get him connected with some higher up business people. That way we can continue to get Paperboy's name out there. Uh, we want to have him interact with uh, with a, a white woman who can, I guess, mistake him for another black man. And, uh, and we want to give him something him, though. Like she, she actually yeah. ends up helping him like make connections. Well, I think she was in the, she was under the impression that uh, he would have been able to get into that room regardless yeah. Yeah. of her help so she wasn't aware that she was helping him she just thought that she was like i don't know getting him off to another room so that she could like bur- get his guard down or something because she's her her intentions are obviously it's nothing blast. but to cause to cause alonzo harm yeah yeah <laughs> um and uh and i mean you know atlanta is no stranger to just like introducing one-off characters or one-off episodes that are just like bizarre and then you know never show up again um, and I guess this is kind of that, but it's like in a B in a, like a B plot of an episode. Yeah. Do you do you have, is that a criticism in your mind? Like, like I don't think so. Things that no, are left. I hanging? like that. It, no, I like that. Yeah, I like it, that because uh, I fine. feel like that gives the world life. Yeah, but I feel like that. I mean, there there are yeah. some things that, and maybe I shouldn't spoil anything, but there are some um, plots that never seem to like. There are some things you're left wondering about that you you think they're going to come back oh, yeah. in future episodes, but they don't. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, this was, this is not really an example of that. This character just kind of comes and goes and, you know, she's, she, she ends up being a bitch to, uh, to earn b- before she leaves. And, and earn is just kind of like, I mean, the Migos were an example of that. I remember when I was first watching yeah, this show, I was right. wondering, are I asked you, I was back? like, I was like, I wonder how they're going to come back. Cause in any other show, it's like this, like an entire half of the episode is dedicated to this, like to these drug dealers who like release a guy from their like, uh, RV completely naked <laughs> yeah. and then like make him get dressed and run off into the woods and then shoot him. <laughs> really like weird. what a buzz. Bizar- and then, and then they, you know, introduce this like fourth member who's like all he's like, all happy and stuff and Al is like that guy's gonna get killed tonight or whatever <laughs> yeah. it's like what an interesting set of characters like I I bet there like there's a lot more that this you know show could do with them I wonder when we'll see them next never, never again. again yeah so yeah I mean yeah Which just, I like, had that feeling a couple different times throughout yeah but but it's not and like sometimes sometimes you meet really weird people once in your life and yeah. then you just never see them again you know you wonder if like these all of these uh, episodes in the entire series was written out before, you know, it was shot because. Oh, I think so. That, I that's assume how most that's the TV case, shows but work. Sometimes you wonder if, like, they they want to write somebody back into the series or, or or purposely like drop characters. I don't despite, feel like I, I doubt that they would want to. It's unfinished. Maybe I doubt <clears> that they would want to write characters that like they initially didn't. Well, actually, I mean, maybe maybe part of the idea of having so many like loose ends hanging is that they can pick them back up whenever they feel like it. I mean, I want, but I definitely don't I get the impression to see that, that guy on the bus again. Yeah, like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> this guy was like a, and he did, by the way, show up in a, a TV show. Uh, I think I maybe already said that, but this this sort of ghost like figure that talked to Ern on the bus like he never shows up again really either mm-hmm. so we shouldn't spoil all these things but so all right let's go back to the uh, the basketball game so uh paperboy is participating in what i guess is some sort of charity event and he's playing basketball <laughs> against justin and they're trash talking oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they they trash talk. They get in a fight, and then Justin ends up apologizing to the to the press. But it's not really a fight. I, I I have a few comments there too. Like, like oh, is this another unrealistic? Uh, I, well, I, I guess this is a question <laughs> for you. Then is like they they literally Al literally tackles him. Like it's just a gross uh, foul. It, like yeah. in, in terms of basketball sportsmanship, it's terrible sportsmanship. Because you know, 
uh, Justin steals the ball from Al at one point, and he's running down the court for an easy layup. But Al just blatantly undercuts him and tackles him, and they they end up rolling around on the ground uh, in, in mid court. It, mid court, it's it's more comedy than it is like an actual fight because they're at one point Al actually pulls yeah. his shoe off and throws it, but but there's no punches thrown. So I. As a viewer, I'm kind of left looking at Al as like he's not really as tough a guy as is what his image is supposed to be. And I don't know if that was like if, what we're supposed to take away from that, but the, it, it it left me thinking like he's I don't know. just I being mean, childish. I mean, They're both being like childish. I mean, have you seen videos of people who aren't trained fighters getting into fights? It's hilarious. <laughs> Nobody knows how to actually fight. Like everybody, and there's, <laughs> I mean, taking off your shoe and throwing it at somebody you, is like, <laughs> did you catch is like a smarter dialogue? move than what I see from most people? There, there's one scene you might have to watch this a third time because the, there's a scene where he gets that like he gets him in a headlock. I think this is must be right right before they go down on the ground. They he has him in a headlock, and Al Al says, "Get your hand on." off my face or on something about putting his hand on his face. But at that point, Bieber doesn't have his hand on his face. And then it, it looks like an editing mistake to me because I don't know. It's you, just you'll like, have to look at it. They're fighting. I feel like that's just they're <laughs> they're getting into a physical. But yeah, I mean, I, I did have the same uh, feeling about this scene as as like when they first showed the basketball scene. I'm like, ah, these guys are. These guys are not basketball players, and and they're not they're obviously not uh, tough guys. Like they can't they they're either purposely being made to well, look I like children. I mean, I don't children. think Al is actually. I mean, he says this. He's. I don't think Al is actually a tough guy. He doesn't have any actual experience fighting. Like I yeah, mean, but he's, he's, a he's gun fired a gun in the first like, scene. Yeah, he's fired a gun, but like, you know, he does not have any formal training in it, and he certainly doesn't seem to have gotten into a fist fight before. I don't know. It it, it felt Or to I mean me maybe like... he has, but again, he's not like trained in it. Like the, his his extent of of physical altercations is, you know, what we see. He just kind of like tackles people or tries to put them in a headlock, but which you is think like the, the creators I think were, pretty standard. The creators were trying to make fun of Al in this scene. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, that's what I got in, in. But I mean, I don't think that's the. I think that's like tacked on. I don't think that's the main point of the, of the scene. I think it's just that they got in an altercation and it was public, and so Justin has Justin decided the to save his reputation apologizes. Yeah. Um, to the public, and also um, before we get to that final scene, I'll say that um another instance of uh what I think is a very well. I think this this might be a little more underhanded, but I think um, another instance of of uh, of jabbing at the real life Justin Bieber is that uh, black Justin Bieber in in, in this episode um, drops the first hard R of the show, um, which I'm sure everybody will notice that in the in the middle of the in the middle of the basketball game, he's like calling out to one of his other players and he, and he calls him the N word with a hard R. And, um, and I think that, that, um, I've never heard this reference. What are you talking about? Instead of N I G G A, it's N I G G E R. Oh, oh, I know what you're saying now. He, he enunciates the whole word. Yeah, exactly. Which is, is which is considered. Oh, well with, a with an A it's considered generally speaking with an, and I mean, I mean, I'm not, (laughs) <laughs> I'm not to speak on the entire culture, but from what I can tell, generally speaking, with, that's a, worse. with a soft A, uh, with a soft A, so to speak, oh, that's... is uh, is like is sort of the reclaimed version that uh, many black people will call each other as uh-huh. like a form of endear. It's the it's the it's the form of it's the N word that like that is version. like that is like used for oh like we use that for everything for hate love for you know mild annoyance or whatever. But then the hard R is meant to like that's a negative is 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 purely meant to like insult somebody on the basis of them being black ah. i think um, yes i could see and it's that. and it, it like like as as a result of it being like the the word that was used to describe slaves whereas like with the soft a is a little bit removed from that um is that's that's my understanding of it but anyway so that that, um, that speaks even worse to justin's character yeah 
Yeah, but and uh, and um, in uh, in real life, the a video of uh, of the real Justin Bieber uh, surfaced of when he was like fifteen, telling oh, like right, a racist right. joke. I forgot. And, about and that. he uses the hard R in that video, and uh, and I mean in like the YouTube videos uh, of this thing coming up, like all of the comments are just like, "How did he get away with this? Like, I can't believe that he didn't." I can't believe they uh, they didn't cancel pull. him on the spot. I can't believe he had a career after this. And it's like, well, you know, uh, po- you know this this um this Justin Bieber that we see in the show. I mean, it's it's not clear, you know, like, like he said it loudly. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I find it hard to believe that people in the audience did not hear him enunciate that R. And um and you know, again, people seem to just kind of not care. And I think that was again like an, one of the many examples of like pointing out like all of the pretty terrible shit that the real, the real Justin, Justin Bieber, Bieber. kind of just got away with. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah. uh, and I think that's another example no, of like like in right. and again in this show, it's the first time that we hear the hard R, and I think that it's that they saved it. Oh, for that. And I don't even think we hear it any time after this, to be honest. Well, um, it wouldn't sound right if if. Like pa- oh, paper no. boy or, or no burn. no yeah I mean they always you they always just use the soft A, um which is to my knowledge pretty common. But they but, um, I mean there are scenes where they drop the end bomb like in a negative like whether oh, yeah, arguing yeah, with each other and stuff like that. But, yeah yeah no it's like yeah like I said I think um I think with the soft A it's generally like. It's you can tell based on context what they mean. It's a, it's effectively like saying bruh, bruh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Bruh. Um, but uh. So so the last yeah, I think scene... that was another example of, and I mean, and you know, laying my cards on the table, I don't think that I don't think that the real Justin Bieber, you know, should have been like had no career after that video surfaced because he was like fifteen at the time, yeah. and you know, and th- this was at a point when like he you know, had, had a lot of attention on him and, uh, and like he was clearly still trying to figure out and, you know, and he did end up, you know, maturing it. And to my knowledge, he is a, he is a relatively decent guy now. He's not as conceited and egocentric, um, as he, as he once was, although I don't think to my knowledge, it has not, it has not completely gone away. He's still, he's still kind of got celebrity itis, but you know, did you see, um, uh, this is a tangent, but did you see yeah. uh, there was a video that he released of his, he had some sort of paralysis in his face. Uh, oh. He had like a viral oh. infection. Um, I can't remember the name of the, the there's a there's a medical term that describes it, but it's mm. a temporary condition. And uh, uh, people, re- people release some pretty mean spirited memes making fun of uh, yeah. his his half half paralyzed face it looked like he had like mm-hmm. a, it looked like stroke like symptoms but i think he's fine yeah. but it was it was a little yeah he's fine disturbing. now i think i mean to my knowledge again i don't follow him that yeah, closely do I. Um, but that was a good that was yeah, a good anyway. reference because i had forgotten about that too but now that you say that i, I do remember mm-hmm. like him getting in trouble for using the n-word when he was when he was a yep. teenager and, he, and yeah he was pretty young so what do you yeah. think about uh, other I guess it, I guess it would have to be white uh, uh, white rappers using the N word. Is that is that? I literally can't even think of any except one clip where Eminem, Eminem uses the soft yeah. date. Yeah, except like one. It's not even. I don't think it's even in an official song. It's in a freestyle that he did. Like somebody asked him to do a freestyle over a beat, and he used the N word. And it- to my knowledge, everybody was just like everybody. Like nobody really took it that seriously. Like everybody like. I think Eminem had previously like been pretty clear about um, like respecting black people. And then, and, and I think everybody in the comments was kind of like, like, yeah, it's okay. You know, he was like, they were just kind of <laughs> having fun pass. or whatever. Like he, 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 I mean, yeah, basically like he's got the N word pass <laughs> is what a lot of people were saying. Does that apply um, to all white rappers? I, do you I have don't to, know. You have to have I mean, a certain again, level I, of I mean, again, cred, I, street cred, I guess. I'm I'm not too knowledgeable on that. I think it is a kind of a divisive issue, um, and I don't even know of any white rap. I mean, first of all, white rappers are kind of a rare breed. <laughs> well, eh, no, they're, they're not really that rare, but you know, um, I, I do not know of any white rappers who use the N word. And uh, so, so yeah, I guess I, I, I don't even know. It. I don't even know how people would really uh, 
it's, it's really uh, there's it seems pretty uh, universally uh, frowned upon. <laughs> yeah, quite. yeah. To, to my knowledge, it seems like it seems like considered kind of bad etiquette. Like you might not get completely canceled, but like you're gonna ne- immediately like a lot of people are just immediately just gonna be like, okay, I don't really like you. <laughs> Like you need to have you need to have some crazy bars <laughs> to make up for that, I guess. Kendrick Lamar um, commented, he's like, Can- yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one. There, I there were like um, there was one uh, there was one like concert that Kendrick Lamar held where like he invited a white uh girl on stage to like sing one of his song one of his songs yeah. that contained the n word and she said it and he was like whoa, whoa whoa stop the show stop the show he was like you gotta bleep that out and she was like oh oh i'm i'm sorry or whatever um and uh but then there was also another concert where not kendrick lamar but it was another rapper who i don't remember the name of I'm, again i'm not like super hip-hop savvy but he was like hold he like went down into the crowd and was like holding a mic up to a uh, a white uh, like audience member and like encouraging him to sing the lyrics to one of his songs which contained the n-word and the and the, the white kid like did sing it and the, and the the black rapper who was who it was his concert seemed like i think it was travis scott maybe um travis scott. but he seemed like maybe um I, I could be wrong but he was like seemed completely uh in in favor like he was he was like yeah we're all having fun or whatever like he it, well he was like it, he was trying to get them to say it apparently yeah yeah he was um, in yeah in this case he was encouraging him oh. so so my my point just being that like i think there are there are different differing opinions and again this like these were both uh these were both instances of of white fans of these black artists singing the black artists songs so I don't know how I, I feel like, you know, that that's a big difference between that would have uh, been a good somebody between like a white artist who is writing Atlanta. their own bars that includes the N word. Um, that, 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 that kind of scene would have fit nicely into maybe not this episode, but it seems like the kind yeah. of thing that Atlanta would, would put in there. And I think that yeah. actually indirectly, maybe they did. They had the, the, the white guy. He wasn't rapping, but like the first. Was it the first episode? The the white yep. DJ guy drops the N word. That was clearly yep. inappropriate. But there's the um, nondescript ethnic character that uh, was the social media guy. I forget his name now. Zan. Zan. Nobody could tell like what his race was, and mm-hmm. he was dropping the N word. And like, yeah. we're, we'll 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 get to talk about this in some of the uh, subsequent episodes too, where where like. You're you're looking at a mixed race character dropping the N word, and you're like, wait a minute, is this okay? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh yeah, but anyway, I'll I'll kind of close off my thoughts on this episode. What about with, the last uh, scene? By, that's what I was going to okay, discuss. Perfect. Is that um, is that uh, the uh, black Justin Bieber um in response to uh, the fight and like during his apology announces uh, that he's going to be singing a a single from his upcoming <laughs> album Justice. The album is called Justice and uh, fun fact the real Justin Bieber dropped an album called Justice <laughs> in like 2020 or 2021. I think it was 20, I think it was last year. Um and a lot of people have like said like I can't believe Atlanta predicted this and like This is so fascinating to me because on the one hand, I'm thinking there's no way Justin Bieber is that predictable. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like there's no way. (laughs) Um, But then again, like his last album was called Purpose and it had like, which is just like a one word, like, like he has songs called Sorry and Baby, which is like, so like... I, we, I we're gonna have it, to like, look into this. Do, did the I creators? It, I, I did do a little research. I was like, I did do a little research, and like I could not find any sources that confirmed that like this was not just a coincidence. But then at the same time, it's like I also am, am I am inclined to think there's no way that the real Justin Bieber was not at least aware that this episode happened if, if you're like, the real justin bieber do you sign if you're off the real on justin this? like if you're the real justin bieber i'm sure well i don't i don't think they really would have needed to get his sign off on it but do you think but any like, publicity is good publicity and that this episode well i mean maybe ju- maybe the real justin bieber could have like sued yeah atlanta yeah. the atlanta crew for like slander or something like that but eh, i mean that's kind of the like when, when you're as rich as the as 
I guess Donald, I mean, I don't really know how rich the other members of the crew and cast of Atlanta um, are, but at least Donald Glover, I know, is quite wealthy. And, you know, Justin Bieber, Bieber is certainly extremely yeah, wealthy. Yeah. At that point, like, a lawsuit does not mean anything other than how you are viewed by the public. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the only that's the only reason that you would take somebody to, to court at that point. Oh, that's like, funny you mentioned that. You don't care about you don't care about the money that you're going to get and and then but and the, but then like if what you care about is your is your public uh, eye yeah. then you know maybe suing another a show over you know what could just be kind of described as like jabbing or like taking uh like just taking the piss out of like a real situation and also Justin Justin did kind of do a lot of the shit yeah. that uh the, and, and and he has apologized for it, and he's you know clearly aware of that. So I think that if Justin did, which I don't think jo I don't think the real Justin Bieber would have actually wanted to sue the crew and cast of Atlanta. But if he did, I think that the reason why that didn't happen is because he realized that it would have made him look bad um, in the public eye, and that's the only thing that would so really I have matter a theory, to him. I have a theory that Justin actually was. This he he knew about this. This this is pretty meta. Yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. Is I'm sure that the real Justin Bieber must have known about this episode because like and this was it's his an way episode of, uh, like making more than half of the episode is about him, and then like and like you know if they if uh, if he saw if he. I think maybe Justin was just kind of shit posting. I think maybe he was just like kind of trying to be like, I, I, I just find it like there's no way that like, like that's a one in a billion chance yeah. that they would have accurately predicted that he'd call his album justice. <laughs> I don't know about a billion, but, they, but yeah, you're right. Maybe. Uh, but again, like the, I feel like the two options when here is that, that either Justin knew about, is that what? When did, just, when did the actual album drop? Like 2021, I think. 2021. And this episode, and this episode aired in like 2016. Oh man! So which was pretty, fr which was pretty fresh off the heels of I think Justin Justin's album Purpose, which was the one that contained the song uh, Sorry, which uh, this which this episode directly references, and then does a little like meta uh, taking the piss out of at the end of the episode with the like parody song, you know, like whatever I did doesn't matter. <laughs> um, uh, so maybe that the, okay. That the I just Black changed Justin my Bieber opinion. Sings. I think it's more likely than that's five years separated. I think it's more likely that Justin decided to name the album Justice because of the episode. That's what I was gonna say. Is that I oh. feel like that that must be so much more likely. Oh, I didn't than, get it. I, I, than I if thought the they show, were closer in, together in than time if, than no. what you indicated. That's what I was. Well. <laughs> well, that, that, I was initially suspicious of like maybe Justin was doing the pre-production for the for the album Justice at the time that this episode was recorded and he and Donald Glover somehow like got in contact with with Justin and was like hey we're doing this episode yeah, yeah, and like uh, and like they kind of got Justin's seal of approval on it and like wow. just to like but but no I do not think I don't that know, happened man. because because just because he just he had just put out like the album purpose like at the time at the time that this episode that they would have been recording season one i must assume that purpose would have like just come out if i'm just like, a publicist i would object i think purpose came out in 2015 <laughs> i would object to this episode i would not sign I mean, yeah, off maybe on it. but again like but it, but i mean again like to be like 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 this criticism of justin is not that exaggerated like a little bit but not that Still, exaggerated. Like, you know you don't want somebody defaming you yeah like that's this. true no yeah like so like, like, <laughs> here's, here's another of... little tangent i mean it's definitely uh i can connect the dots here johnny depp was just in a high profile court case right amber heard johnny mm -hmm. johnny depp and like something reminded me of johnny depp here because the last the very last scene is um uh, the Val Joyner character journalist uh, standing next to Al while while Justin is up there like like making his apology and then and then breaking into his you know song. Um, Al is trying to give a similar apology to Val Joyner like hey you know people don't understand me either you know mm -hmm. maybe you can give me a, an interview and I have a chance to you know explain it and, and she again she just kind of brushes him off and she's like. Let me give you some advice. You you need to play your part. You know, people don't want Justin to be the asshole. They want you to be the asshole. 
So it's it's a it's an interesting contrast again between the the pop star, you know, good looking young idol in the in the uh, the the rapper, you know, like uh, gangster, who his his part is to be the asshole, but but the the connection to Johnny Depp is is that you know people were like outside the courtroom cheering him as he came out, you know. It, I, I really didn't follow that court case, but I heard enough to know that Johnny Depp wasn't exactly an angel and he, he's got like a, you know, drinking problem and, you know, he's done some pretty shitty things himself. But, but people forgive that. People just see him as, uh, what's the character's name from Pirates of the Caribbean? Captain Jack. Jack Sparrow. Yeah, Jack Sparrow. They're they're just in love with his Captain image. Jack Sparrow, my bad. They're in, in love with his his celebrity, just like they are, you know, Justin Bieber's. You know, that's kind of yeah, a takeaway uh, from this. Yeah, this is also kind of this is also kind of uh well, I think what this episode is, is getting at is that the the media and the public um wants to view people in very binary ways. There's good guys and bad guys. Yeah. And uh, and they want and you know, everybody they like they just view all of these real life these real people's lives is just story is just entertainment. And, you know, in a story you have a, you have a protagonist and an antagonist, you know, and one of them has to be pure evil and the other one has to be yep. purely good. And, uh, and that's just not the case in real life. And yet, uh, but, but because, yeah, shows. but the media, but the media wants to support that idea because it makes money because it gets clicks. And, uh, and Al is not about that. Well, um, that's, that was actually, that aspect of it was sort of missing I mean, I think you're absolutely right. In, what that the media like encourages. Well, there wasn't that? there wasn't a character in this episode that represented that media. The media? I think it was the woman who was inclined to give him oh, the interview, and she okay. just decided yeah, yeah. not to. No, you're right. Al I was saying, "I wanna." Al was saying, "I want to depth in people's view of my character and make them understand who I really am beyond this like surface level one dimensional caricature of of thug rappers." And she was like, eh, "I don't think my audience would yeah. be interested." No, you're in that. right. And frankly, neither would I. You're right. But it was interesting that like even even that character like you saw her like like dancing a you know right like she was enraptured with Bieber as well like like she she absolutely did like say that she voiced the uh you know what you just said you know about the binary aspects of of these these entertainers but like you could see in the audience like when the camera like went to the audience member watching this apology that Justin was giving everybody was just like you know they were all forgiving faces or then when he started dancing and singing they were all like oh they're entertaining even the cameraman out in the audience was smiling and mm -hmm. like shaking his hips like they, they were all just like mesmerized somehow by by Justin I think that that's a recurring storyline where you know and, and, it, and it's part of the of Al's character arc too, that this is what he's going to be dealing with, uh, throughout. There's going to be other, other, um, rap singers, pop stars, more like popular young uh, people that Al comes across in subsequent episodes that like don't have the profile that Justin maybe has here, but, uh, but are similarly, uh, you know, like made out to be sort of likable good guys. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, it's just like the protagonists when when people when some people get stamped with the protagonist label like the public is just going to treat them better. They're just going to like forgive the the mean things that they've done and when you're stamped with the antagonist label, people are not going to be very forgiving of that. And I think that yeah, part of this this episode is saying that like that's that's partly the public's fault. A lot of it is the media's fault. A lot some of it is uh you know, uh, and then uh and then that uh, African American people are more likely, or are generally like given less credit, or they're more likely to kind of be put into the antagonist aggressor uh, role, and uh, and that like and that like the media is perfectly content to just like play into whatever the audience. Well, I mean, they didn't want to see race specific in this case. Because they were both black. Well, no, but I well, but I think that it's I think that like like I said, I think that the this episode wants us to 
obviously it's drawing parallels between this Justin Bieber and the real Justin Bieber. And yeah. obviously this one is black and the other one isn't. And I mean, I, I already went all over all of this. I think yeah. that I think that the intended reaction is to is to say like, man, this guy's such an asshole. And then you think, actually, the real, you know, this guy is just like the real Justin Bieber. Why did he get off so easy? Huh, what's the difference between this fictional Justin Bieber and the real Justin Bieber? I wonder. Well, but this, but this Justin Bieber also gets off. Yeah, but do you think he should have? No. Well, there you go. I mean, it's a little bit ambiguous, but no. I mean, there, there should have been some somebody, you know, if if you wanted the sort of moral clarity at the end, you know, there should have been somebody who, who did put him in his place, or or there should have been should well, have been but, some okay, sort okay. of better, more credible apology. Like you, you really got the impression that that he was faking it at the end, right? I mean, yeah. And and that he is a yeah. fake character. Exactly. Yeah. But like, but the audience forgave not, him. Did he, are you are the audience oh, and you just said you didn't. Oh, I you mean the viewers. Yeah. Uh Yeah, this is a parallel to a real life person. Right. No, that's right. And and in this ca- and in this case, I mean if you're talking about like somebody should have criticized him more like Al Al is like meant we're viewing this like largely through our protagonist's perspective and Al is the protagonist of this not exactly like string of the story either because he was responsible no. for the, the No, fight. not not well no no he's certainly not entirely uh he certainly also deserves some of the blame but we're more inclined to sympathize with him a because we more, we know more about his character and b because he is unfairly treated by the media in this in this scene because you know he's seen as just the thug at the beginning, I guess, and, and at the end, uh, she tells him to play his part. They, she, she again, like at the beginning the of this episode, is he, he was at, being the an of this episode, he at the beginning of this episode. Tackled at the beginning. He at the beginning of okay, okay. <laughs> that was no again, again. Okay, okay. I'm I look. I'll, I'll I think that uh I think that Al is not being as much of an asshole, but I'd say that in this confrontation that he had with just with the Justin Bieber, black Justin Bieber, that they both shared roughly equal blame for it. However, Al is completely ignored and not given a chance to explain himself. And Justin is completely allowed off scot-free, right? Whereas the reality is that both of them should have been held to roughly equal accountability. I think that I feel like that's a pretty reasonable claim to make. And so, and so like, you know, for, as an audience, again, like I, again, I'm not talking in this binary manner where I think that Al should have been completely forgiven, but I think he should have been allowed, he should have been given the microphone and and been allowed to speak for himself and explain his side of the story. Yeah. You're definitely kind of rooting for Al's redemption in yeah. some way, but yeah, no, I'm, yeah, certainly I'm more inclined to root for Al because he was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Al Al is absolutely like shooting himself in the foot in the sense that he should know that this and I think he does to an extent. He should know that the industry that he's like making his job in is corrupt and he's going to be treated this way and he gets kind of mad and you know, part of you wants part of the audience wants to say like, "Well, what'd you expect?" Yeah, you know? Yeah. But then the other part of you but then the other part and what the show is, you know, I think uh also about is saying, "Well, if we can change this system, we should, you know, it's like, but I mean, like how much, you're, you're how much of this system is like, it's just animus. the way it is. You're, what? you're, you're, you're assigning like a race, a racial explanation for Al's mistreatment when, when his, I think his audience yeah, because wants him to play that part and his audience is largely black. Yeah. Partially. Yeah. Maybe the media side of it. I think the law, I mean, I mean, partially his audience, I'd say, I'd say that the majority force that's like pushing him towards this uh, antagonist thug sort of character is uh, like, I mean, A, it's a white woman representing the media. I think almost every media personality that we see in this episode and in the entire rest of the show is white. And, you know, when we're talking about the media, we're talking about a company that's trying to appeal to the mass number of people. And most people in America are white. Yeah, yeah, I think that's why, that's, resi- that's why a lot of media has been very resistant. That's why a lot of media has been very like resistant to, uh, but like all the like historically speaking, all yeah. the characters, black and white. I think mostly black characters in this in this show. I mean, they're uh, congratulating Al in some way for 
from being, you know, a part of a, a part of a murder or what they think is a murder or what they think is some. The two realities murder. aren't mutual. I mean, those two things aren't mutually exclusive. And also, you know, Al is upset that those people kind of see him that way. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying the, the creators not... of the show are, are definitely pointing to this problem in the culture of glamorizing this thug life and, and how I'm Al's talking. Yeah, stuck well, on, stuck. I mean, I even think though that's, I think that's part like of other that. episodes, but I'm talking about this episode specifically. And I think in this episode, a finger is very clearly being pointed towards the media. And I think that given that. Uh, you know, this is clearly a like a re- that this yeah. episode is clearly making reference to a real life person and criticizing his real life behaviors, and then and then making a very intentional distinction between the real life Justin Bieber who is white and this fictional Justin Bieber who is black. I think that like there's there's just like no room to argue that there's not some point being made about how the media treats and and the public at large like treats uh black celebrities versus white celebrities by 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 making a character who's literally exactly the same as a real life celebrity who has a very like tarnished history with the media and the public except the only difference in this fictionalized version is that he's black like that's i think that's just inarguably like draw like questioning like the difference between how the media and the public I guess I'm kind of addresses the, the point though if if he 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 gains redemption in real life as well as in this episode at the end like the outcome is the same for Justin Bieber regardless of whether he's black or white but it's right, not but for... in real life okay okay in real life the i'll say we even though again i wasn't really paying attention but i'll say but like we were the audience that's cheering on black justin bieber in the show right and now this this episode of the show is giving us the opportunity to like look at ourselves from a third from like a a third person perspective and reflect on how we reacted to the real Justin Bieber I guess and that, say, hmm, maybe we shouldn't have reacted the way that we did and then question why we uh, reacted the way we did. Yeah, it assumes you're familiar with the whole Justin Bieber story. I mean, Justin Bieber is one of the most famous people on the planet. <laughs> I really? think that's a pretty... <laughs> That's sad. To my knowledge, yeah, I don't know. Man, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but like, he's he's a famous guy. Yeah, he's yeah. certainly more famous yeah. than this show, I think. <laughs> So, Actually, you know what? No, he is one of the most famous people on the planet. You ask anybody on the planet who, if you say the name Justin Bieber, I guarantee you, like at least half of people would, half of everybody would say, like I've heard that name before, even if they don't know the songs. That, that alone Whatever. is criticism of our culture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well. But yeah, good, that's pretty good, much the end of the good episode. Discussion. I think. Uh, I think you uh, highlighted a few things that I failed to pick up on. Uh, yes we'll we'll continue the conversation with episode six and we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll try to hit some other uh donald glover uh videos or maybe yep. we can do some yeah yeah check comments. out the patreon we did this is america epic epic episode you all should definitely watch it and uh and you all should definitely patron for more content down the way the longer we do this the bigger that library of bonus episodes is going to get uh, and uh, and you'll only be able to be two weeks ahead uh, right now before all of the episodes are just regular and up. So, uh, yeah, hit that patron button. There isn't really a patron button, whatever. <laughs> hit the pledge button, button right now. I um, think that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching, as always. All right. See you next Have time. Have a good one.